What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the long-awaited episode 6 of our 101 series. If you want to be given a shout-out for the upcoming episode, comment down below for the next retired NBA player, and I'll randomly pin the winning comment. So drop a like and comment immediately. Today we'll be talking about the five-time NBA champion and the two-time champ as a coach, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr was born in the capital of Lebanon, known as Beirut. Kerr spent a majority of his childhood across the world in Lebanon. Kerr ended up entering the United States of America and moved up to Los Angeles and played some good high school basketball in Palisades Charter. Kerr was showcasing some of his amazing sharpshooting touch out there and tried to get a few looks from college scouts. Kerr finally got a shot to play college ball and was recruited by the University of Arizona. Steve Kerr was recognized for his menacing shot from outside. He ended up becoming a solid role player in his freshman year, and it seemed like everything was going great for him. He was starting to live the life of a college athlete. However, Kerr's golden life was immediately shattered. January 18, 1984, that morning tragedy struck. His father, Malcolm Kerr, who was a university professor in Kerr's hometown and was also a well-respected man. Unfortunately, a gunman decided to end Malcolm's life at the age of 52. He was shot twice by an Islamic jihadist due to political tensions in Lebanon. Kerr was devastated. His life was going so well up to that day. He believed that bad things will never happen to him. It was certainly the hardest moment in his entire life. Matter of fact, one day, Kerr was getting ready for a game. Another tragic moment occurred. Fans are usually vile and awful, but these Arizona fans crossed the line. They were chanting this, quote, Your father is history, and demanding Kerr to go back to Lebanon. That was an absolute disgusting moment, and was especially hard on him. He had to be drowning in tears after hearing those awful remarks. But he stayed strong and went out and dropped 20 points in the first half of that very game. It had to be the most emotional 20 points he has ever scored. Kerr completed his five years in Arizona and ended up becoming a decent player. However, in his fourth year, he got injured and missed an entire season. But that year, he was able to lead his team to the Final Four. Great way to end your college career, huh? Well, not really. In his final game with Arizona, he missed a shocking 10 threes that night. He even claims today that that night is a night he will never forget in terms of basketball because of how bad he performed. Kerr decided to head into the NBA draft. Unfortunately, he was drafted super duper late. He was not really expected to be much, to be honest. Well, he was a 6'3 guard and had a jump shot, but that's really, yeah, that's pretty much all he had going for him. He was drafted in 1988 in the second round with the 50th pick by the Phoenix Suns. When the season started, Kerr was basically getting zero, and I mean zero playing time with the, with the Suns. Averaging just two points per game in six minutes, it's safe to say the Suns couldn't find any use with him on the roster, so it was kind of time for him to go, and the Suns quickly cut ties with him. He was traded and landed with his current day NBA rivals, the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs gave Kerr a better chance to showcase his skills in the NBA. He did get a slightly better role in the Cavs, but he still wasn't really all that impressive. Next team on the menu for Kerr is the Orlando Maddox, and I just got a message from Kerr, and he told me not to mention his time with the Magic. So yeah, let's act like that didn't happen. Now to his so-called prime of his career. The reason why I say it's so-called prime is because he really didn't put up some mouth-watering numbers. But it's time. But it. But it is the time that we as NBA fans all knew about him. His time with the overpowered '90s Chicago Bulls team, led by the goat himself, Michael Jordan. He was a part of that roster for the franchise's final 3 P. Okay, okay, quick story. Well, we all know the story about Michael Jordan punching Kerr, so I won't go deep into this topic, but Kerr did claim that that moment was a sort of wake-up call for him, and that punch was like a punch he would never forget. It was a moment that he got respect for Michael Jordan and was something that gave him confidence in himself for the rest of his NBA career. So I guess you should sort of kind of ask your teammates to give you a black eye and it's been proven that they'll make you better so yeah allow your teammates to get you know punch you in the face immediately after the three p kerr was shipped again but how lucky it was for kerr to land right into a championship team 
That team was the San Antonio Spurs. He kind of played the same role with the Spurs as an optional backup shooter for the team and ended up winning with them. How lucky is it to win four straight NBA titles? Congrats, Kerr. That's really outstanding. Not many players can claim to have won four straight NBA titles. However, the next four years did not go so well with Kerr. The Spurs had to sit back and watch Shaq and Kobe take over the league. Realizing that, Kerr ended up getting traded after just three years with the Spurs. He got tossed up again and joined forces with his old teammate Scottie Pippen of the Portland Trail Blazers, but things didn't go well with the Blazers. They were demolished in the first round by the duo we all know in the Lakers in the early 2000s. I think we all know who I'm talking about. <coughs> Shaq, <coughs> Kobe, <coughs> Lakers, <coughs> three <Three-peat>. Pete. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. In his final season in the league, he was traded once again, and this time he returned to the San Antonio Spurs, and guess what? How lucky he was again to win another title with the Spurs. He's got to have some sort of time machine to see the future or some really good, and I mean really good luck. And yeah, he ended up winning with the Spurs. Now, isn't that cool? Now, really, to be honest, just listen to this. Now, isn't that a really cool way to retire? You get it? You get it? Cool way to retire? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, uh-huh. After Kerr retired, he ended up assisting the team and was drafted by which is the Phoenix Suns. Next thing you know, Kerr was given president of basketball operations. So, yeah, he was kind of running the team. And he was one of the main reasons why they landed Shaquille O'Neal. So, yeah, Kerr, you know, in my opinion, he did pretty good there. After that all was said and done, Kerr found his way making a quick few bucks by being an NBA commentator for TNT on the sideline of NBA games. You know those guys that just be talking and talking and you don't even be listening to them, you're just watching the game, you're like, what is he talking about? You know, you're those guys. You're Kerr was one of those guys. And after that was all said and done, Kerr was gifted, uh, was gifted again and is now the coach of the Golden State Warriors, getting three straight 67 win or more seasons, and that's not all in a row and one of them an NBA record of winning 73 games and getting to the NBA finals three straight times and winning two out of three of them so yeah Kerr has been a rather successful coach oh and after winning the 73 games by the way did I mention that somehow he was able to acquire one of the best players in the NBA in free agency and easily got the best free agent signing like ever Getting Kevin Durant. Some say we haven't even seen the team's true potential yet. Yeah, I know. That's really mind-boggling, but we really haven't seen this Golden State Warriors team's true potential. And that, that, that really makes me feel like I can't sleep at night. Now, that's about it for this video. If you guys did enjoy this, be sure to drop a like and comment and subscribe for more. And more importantly, comment below who is next for the next episode of NBA 101.